Welcome to the Well After Hours. I'm Beverly Allen, and I'm so, so glad, as always, that you're joining us in conversation today. It's a conversation that you can invite your friends, your neighbors. It's about moms, Christian moms, who are raising their children in this secular world age that we live in, how to hold on to their faith. And I've got two phenomenal moms that I personally know who are intentional about raising their children in the faith and making them successful in this world. So I'm gonna start off and have you introduce themselves. You can look right in the camera and tell your name, a little bit about yourself. Good morning, good evening. My name is Alyssa Rawls and I am uh, the wife of Pastor Brian Rawls Sr. and the mom of Brian Rawls Jr. I am a child care director for the city of Newark and a professional mom. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Loida Lopez Oliveira, and I'm married to Angel Oliveira, and I have two beautiful daughters, Layla, who's 21, and Aleida, who's 13 years old. And I work for Rutgers School of Dental Medicine as a registered dental assistant. I am so happy that you ladies took the time. Thank you from my heart, personally, for being here with me on a Saturday morning, which is a tough time for moms. I understand what you had to go through and what you do. Both of you have such busy schedules, but I appreciate it because this is a topic and a subject that I think will encourage, and that's what the Well After Hours is all about, about encouraging women, about uplifting them, and even challenging them sometimes, you know, in their walk of faith in the Lord. It's, it gets tougher in this world. So as we're talking about raising our children, you have a son and you have daughters and it's it's hard equally for both but what are some of the things that are really like kind of embedded in your mind as you rear your child or prepare him to send him out into the world because as the there's an old adage used to say the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world you know and we look at the world as it is now as uh, in society how things are going it's getting very difficult it's getting rough for our young people. Uh, when we were growing up, or when I was growing up, you ladies are much younger than me, but as I was growing up, it was normal to have, you know, eat, everybody eats together, we pray together at dinner time, you know, we gathered around, you know, my mom was like a house mom, you know, a mom, a stay-at-home mom, and my father went to work, but times are different. Now both parents are working because it takes two parents to Absolutely. really yes. raise a family financially and emotionally. We know that. And for Christian parents, it is really getting difficult because you have so many different ideologies and um, teachings that are going around that are in conflict to how you're trying to raise you know, your children. But uh, we hope today that maybe you can even give some pointers and some tips about your experiences because nobody has a one answer for all, for everybody's mm -hmm. household. You know your household, you know your children, and you know what the goal is for your children. Just tell uh, the, the viewing audience a little bit about, first of all, maybe, as you said, your, your child is now going into high school. Your oldest is in college. So I know you've got a lot to say about how you got her because I remember when she was born from that time up until now and your younger daughter that you're raising. I'll start with uh, Alyssa. Um, your son, I mean, he's going into high school now You and you're married to a pastor. She's also a person lady. She's running a daycare. She's a businesswoman. And so you have all these all these hats that you're wearing. And I know women are great at multitasking, but my goodness. Yes. Um, I'd first like to say that balance is really key. Mm -hmm. Balance is really key. Uh, I try to keep um, our home life as the priority, our home life as the priority, and just the hearth and heartbeat of everything that we do. Uh, making sure that my son understands that with so many things going on outside, that it's the inside that really is what's important. So it's our home life that really uh, builds his foundation uh, with Christ as well as his uh, just principles and his core values and helping him to understand that he's important and finding out who he is is major and that we appreciate him for uh, you know all the great things that he's about and we also want to help him build up those things that aren't so great. And I think that gives him a different outlook and a different approach, whether it's to uh, athleticism, academics, or just social uh, encounters. Same. I mean, 
mean, uh, with being in college, your, your, your child encounters a lot of philosophy that goes completely against our faith and, and, and our core values and our moral values. And the one thing that I would like to say is that home, like you said, w you know, making that dinner priority, that hour, you, 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 if you have to shift time, you know, maybe you can't have dinner at six o'clock, it has to be at seven. Um, maybe you have to prepare dinner for two days just so that when you do come and your child who's coming from college, who's commuting, let's say, that's the situation with my daughter, um, there's times where classes don't end till about seven, you know? So I intentionally make sure that our dinner hour is changed or we can at least have that time, uh, as well as our prayer time as a family, as a unit, you know? And the word, and just reconfirming the word. When she comes home and she says, well, this is what they said in my philosophy class. Mm. And she's like, and I chuckled, and, and she, you know, I remember her saying that she encountered a class where they said, even in the Bible, women are belittled. Everyone is belittled. And so she said, you know, I became so angry, but at the same time, I stopped and I said, wait a minute, that's not true. Because he was saying, you know, women are submissive. They, they, you know, you don't listen to them. They, that's what the Bible teaches. And she said, I had to compose myself because I had to say to myself, how do I say this eloquently, you know, also backed up with my education, but with the force of the Holy Spirit, you know, with God, like knowing that God is behind me, that I know that this word that I'm going to impart is going to touch someone in that room. It's not going to come back void, Mom. So she said, I raised my hand and I said, excuse me, professor, I'm a Christian and I want, you to, I want to take you to the scriptures. And his face, just, he was just floored. And she said, in the Bible, we have a, a character, as you would say it, but I say a biblical woman. And her name was Deborah. <laughs> and she was like, and guess what? When the men didn't want to do anything, she said, then, you know what? You're going to lose the blessing, okay? But I'm going to go. I'm going to go for it. I'll go with you. He even said, and so she, she took him to the scriptures, and she said to him, I hope that the next class that you have, you would refrain from saying that, and I hope that you would be able to um, open up the word of God and, and learn about Deborah and other women in the word. <laughs> so when she came home, you know, she's driving and she's, she's calling me. She's like, I have to talk to you. I say, well, you're driving. We're not going to have this conversation. <laughs> so she says, no, 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 you don't understand. I said, when, I'm, when, when you get home, we're waiting. And that's intentional, you know. And we all sat down and we were together and we spoke about it. And I reconfirmed to her, I'm so proud of you Absolutely. because, you know, you, the word of God is planted in you, you know, and that's what we can do as parents is just encourage the word, but also put it as a life application. This happened in the word, and you're going through this process, but this is what the word of God said, you know. So. And, and you know what? Somewhere down the line, you created in her a sense of holy boldness yes. Amen. that she was able mm -hmm. to stand up and articulate. Yes. God's word and be able to share it mm -hmm. amongst her peers because it wasn't just a professor. Like you said, she impacted so many mm -hmm. and our current community, Brian, who's he'll be a sophomore actually this year. Mm -hmm. So in our current community, there are so many religions. Yes. Mm -hmm. So his friends is just just a variety uh, of religions and of just different nationalities. Mm -hmm. My husband calls them sometimes the um, what is the group? All the kids are uh, spanky and. Alfalfa, the, the our gang, little rascals, called them little rascals. <laughs> but in that time, in, in, in that group, there's so many religions, and my son has, my husband has nurtured in him a respect for other religions yes. and other other cultures. Yeah. But while doing that, he's also nurtured him to be able to articulate and share what his faith is. Mm -hmm. So you know, my son has um, gone to first communions. Mm -hmm. He's gone to bar mitzvahs. These were celebrations of his friends. Mm -hmm. But also when he turned 13, he had a botillion, which is a Christian, mm -hmm. you know, coming out mm -hmm. of an African-American child. So his friends were able to come. So he's able to share and allow them to share, but then come home and talk about the differences mm -hmm. respectfully and understand that, you know, we believe differently. Mm -hmm. 
he had a friend who told him in the second grade, he said, you know, there's no, maybe first grade, there's no Santa Claus. You know, there's no God. They had kind of mixed it all together in his class. <laughs> so he came home and he was like, he was taken aback. He was really upset. And he said, mommy, yeah, I'll just call him George. George said, da -da -da, mommy, mommy. I said, well, did you listen to George? He said, well, I heard what he said. I said, well, what do you believe? I said, when you go back to school, you tell George that, you know, we believe in Jesus, and Jesus is alive. And you're in first grade, so you can tell him Santa's real until he's not real to you anymore. <laughs> so, you know, we help to affirm yes. his differences, and I think that's okay. And hopefully, when he's in college, yes. he's able to stand like your daughter did. Yes. Stand on the faith, be able to articulate the scriptures, and share. And, 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 and that's hit the nail right on the head, because one of the difficulties of our Christian children is when by the time they get to college, many of them are not prepared. Mm -hmm. They don't understand it. I mean, just like socially, he's been introduced to other faith, but he has also understood through your teachings what his faith right. is and what the differences mm -hmm. are and to be able to take a stand to see where his is above, you know. Uh, most other religions, they each may have something nice to contribute, you know, because that's exactly. what happens. Kids get to college, they're exploring this and that, and by the time they finish, they're putting a little bit of this in with a little mixing bit of the that, soup. and mixing it all up. And it's like, well, they're not really standing on anything firm because they're putting one thing that really doesn't go with another, but it sounds good. And the statistics show that we're losing our kids by the time they get to college, but because they've been introduced to these things early and they understand that, and that I think is the key, is at home. Sometimes we send our kids to school and we send them to church, but that's just a little piece of it. The big majority is what they get from home and what yeah. they see role model through their parents, you know? Absolutely. I think that when children are able to see their parents, mm -hmm. you know, read the word of God, study the word of God, uh, speak about the Word of God mm -hmm. and share and I think that children have a should have a voice yeah. and although we teach them what's right we have to not just hear what we're saying is right but we have to kind of let them share what they're hearing because sometimes what we're saying and what they're hearing is not the same thing yeah. so I love when I sit and um, my husband and my son are having dialogue and my husband asked him so now what did you think about what we just said Yes. Exactly. And then Brian's able to articulate it back. And sometimes he didn't get the point. So Brian, we have to start all over again. Okay, you didn't get it that way. You know, let me give it to you another way. Um, and when we were growing up, you know, our parents didn't speak as much, mm -hmm. or there wasn't that or much conversation, allowed, or you weren't allowed. It was kind of called mm -hmm. talking yes. back, right? But now I think we're understanding that just as teachers differentiate education and lessons yes. and their plans, every child's plan is not the same. So sometimes we have to roll back the film and say, let me teach my child this lesson this way. Maybe he didn't get it by just me writing it on a tablet. You know, maybe he'll get it if I just make sticky notes yep. all around the house and give them different ways. But I mean, long as the end result, you know, is right, we have to find different ways. And the, the home is a key thing. Mm -hmm. Many, many parents, you know, we feel as though we were going to church we, you know, we have the ritual that we are going to our daily, you know, weekly service, our Sunday service, but we forget that our first service starts home, yeah. and and so we're the primary example. Uh, you know, uh, we had an article and it and it it just impacted me because it said that um, the man used to go to uh, have drinks every time he would get out yes, of work. Yes, absolutely, right? absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it did that article impacted me because he said it was snowing and he left. You know yes. his 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 footprints. Yeah. footprints you know, <laughs> leading to there. And when he looks back, he sees that his son is there. Mm -hmm. And it, it you know it blew his mind that his son what? would follow him to this bar mm -hmm. because he was following his footprints. footprints. You know, like yes. yeah. And so it 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 impacted me that we have to lay those footsteps to yeah. the cross. Mm -hmm. You know, we are responsible. The Lord has given us a gift. I mean, the word says that our children are inheritance, right? Lord. And they're gifts from the Lord. So they're only gifted to you, okay? You're responsible for training up the child in the way that he should go. But what happens when the child isn't trained in the way that he should go? You know? I came from a background where I, did, I didn't know the gospel, you know? But I thank God that whatever traditional background that I did come from, it did set for me to come to know Christ yes. deeper. But... That and I see my life 
in comparison to my daughter's life. And I say, wow, Lord, it's just such a blessing to rear your children in your, you know, in your statures. And again, those footprints, we, we, we need to, as you said, sister, um, see him, let him see us praying. That's right. Let him see us when we have also our downfalls, when we come short because we, you know, we're flesh. We come short from the glory of God, the word says. And let them see when we do make a mistake that we can say to even our children. That's the biggest thing that I've learned from my childhood is that my parents would never have said, I'm so sorry that I hurt you. I'm so sorry that, you know, I said this to you or I made a mistake. And I intentionally said to my daughters, like, I will always say to you, I am sorry if I did it wrong. But if I didn't do it wrong and you're just not receiving it, I'll tell you this. Right now you don't understand it, but I promise you, you will in the long run. So Absolutely. intentional. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's the word. Absolutely. Did you and, want to say and just creating a thirst. Yes. I think you have to create a thirst yes. with our children. You know, they, they, they don't always know what to be thirsty or hungry about, mm -hmm. right? We have to kind of plant those seeds. You know, my child wouldn't, he just doesn't want to take a vitamin every day, mm -hmm. right? But sometimes, you know, sometimes the vitamin has to be force fed. And then mm -hmm. other times he understands, you know, sometimes it's just a different label on the bottle. Mm -hmm. You know, now he has a vitamin that says teen sports. He takes this vitamin every day. It's the same <laughs> vitamin as the one with the doctor's thing, but it said something that was more attractive to him. Yeah. We have to make the gospel attractive. attractive. Yes. Yes. You know, it's not just, it's not penance. Mm -hmm. It's not a punishment. Yes. This is our family time. It's amazing. We have a good time when we're doing this and we're learning about, yes. you know, our Heavenly Father. And that's what's important. Yes, it's like you said, it's not force fed, but it's fun and making it palatable mm -hmm. <laughs> for our for kids mm -hmm. to actually, you know, handle it. And, they, and this way, they don't feel like they're strained or they've been forced because you hear adults even now saying, you know, well, I was forced. I had to go to church all the time and this and that. And the world would love that. The mm -hmm. secular society would love that because they want a chance. They know that Solomon was wise when he said, train up a child in the way that he he should go and when he's old he won't depart from that and that's what society is now is doing now trying to correct a lot of the ways that children were trained up into yes. you know that is normal to them and we look at it and we gasp and say that's not normal mm -hmm. what's normal about that but they're still asking us to not um, be so um, I don't want to say regimented or strategic about what we teach our children in faith, you know, in Christian and about Christ, uh, so that they can have room to implant what Absolute, they want to put absolutely. into them. And so that's absolutely. why we have to pour into them, right. you know, because if we don't, they will, the enemy will. And uh, you see what we have today, but I thank God, you know, that uh, you two are absolute great moms. And I see why Solomon opened up his, the first chapter of Proverbs, where he tells, um, the, he tells his son, he's speaking to his son, and he says, don't forget your father's instructions, but don't ever reject or leave your mother's teachings. Mm -hmm. And it just goes to show what a impact that a mom can have on her child's life. Mm -hmm. And you both have obviously uh, had that. And I'd be thinking of, you know, what I see with your son and what I see with your daughters. And, you know, that's another thing I want to ask you, especially being a young man, man today, like the things you teach him as far as like he'll be dating <laughs> you know, I know we hate to think about that. Like, well, yes. you've been through that with, yes. uh, you know, your older daughter, but Alita, Alita will be yes. going mm -hmm. on to, uh, you know, someday. What do you, what do you prepare them for? Because, you know, you've got the Me Too movement. You've got all the things that are happening, things that happened before. You know, I just following in dad's footsteps, such a respectful and honorable, you know, young man that uh, Pastor Brian is, you know, his father's great, you know. But even still, when he's not with him, there's still other influences, right. you know. What does, what do you kind of say to your son about you know, things like that? I take it from uh, his pre-K two and a half teacher. She always talked to the children about making a good choice. Mm -hmm. So I constantly remind Brian to make a good choice. Make a good choice, Brian. Think before you act, Brian. Make a good choice. And now he's not as aggressive uh, with the dating game as he probably will be. Mm -hmm. And the girls seem to be a little bit more aggressive mm -hmm. than he is. Mm -hmm. So even with that, Tom Brian, you know, make a good choice. Um, think about your responses before you respond. You always want to be kind. You always want to be compassionate. And you always want to treat people fairly. I said, you know, I always say a girl that you don't like today, 
maybe a woman that you love tomorrow. So you want to make sure that your responses to their words and your contact with them is always kind and respectable. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about what do you tell you know your daughters? I, mean, I know you've told <laughs> uh, Layla a lot of things. Yes, <laughs> I mean, so you know much. about what to look for mm -hmm. in a young man, and you know what to boundaries that are yes, set. You know, boundaries. parents set boundaries for their children, as Absolutely. you even said earlier, because some of them are too young to set mm -hmm. the boundaries. Yes. You have to set it for them. You know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. what do you? And, and I think that I mean, and I know that also the key part of her peak, this stage is the father. The father's such a big influence. Yes on our daughters, you know, what the father relates to them, you know, relates to them will impact them. You know, if, if she comes across, like, you know, she came across one young man and, and she said, yes, he's a really nice young man, but he doesn't go to school. Like, he has no idea what he wants to do with his life. And then she says, of course, so it's also looking at everything. And she says, well, you know, I've always seen dad work hard. And I've always seen him set goals and pursue them, and things like that, um, that you have to look at. And boundaries, yes, absolutely. If you, I say to her, if you like someone, yeah, I'm not gonna say that you're not gonna like a young man. Be in a group setting, you know, go together in mm -hmm. groups. Because in groups, I said to her, it's not even, I mean, it, it is primarily to safeguard yourself, mm -hmm. but also it is, you'll get to know this young man, who he is. Because you'll see if he's angry, if how he associates with other young ladies. Is he going to be as respectful to other young ladies that are in the Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is he going to probably say something that you may not agree with that is not what you were taught biblically as well as in your home? And then guard yourself. Guard your testimony. That's yes. the biggest thing I tell her. I said, guard yourself that no one can say she... You know, you can be getting out of a car because that young man just drove you to, you know, one spot, a, you know, to drop you off for a second. But someone just saw you getting off a car with a young man, and they have no clue, but their mind just went a thousand miles. Yeah. So it's, so it's <laughs> being good. intentional with your decisions. Um, I always say to her, um, make smart choices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be bold, yeah. but make smart choices. Right. Good, good. That's very mm -hmm. good. And so, wow, you know what? We're going to have to do a part two because you guys are just just <laughs> filling this, uh, you know, this whole program with such good tools, you know, and things, information, um, and your experiential knowledge, you know, that can help other moms. And so uh, I'm going to close out this way. I'm going to ask you to look in the camera, take a minute, and say something encouraging to any mom um, out there that's raising their child. Sometimes they don't have help. There may not be a dad there, but you know, moms are still intentional and we multitask like nobody's business. What, you know, just a few points that maybe they have, should consider in raising their children. Okay. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God has already been where you're going. He's at the finish line and he's rooting you on. And he knows the obstacles and the hurdles that you're going to encounter. But each hurdle is there for you to jump over. Each obstacle is there for you to leap over. Take your time. Give yourself a chance. And guess what? When you fall a little bit, stand back up, regroup, and keep on pushing. Your children need you. The world needs what you have to impart. Excellent. And I also want to let you know that you definitely have your sisters. We're one body in Christ. And as the scripture tells us that the older women should teach the younger women. And it doesn't have to do always with age. It has to do with experience. So when you feel, mom, that you may be at, at a decision in your life with your child that you don't know what is going to be your answer, Go to your, your, your fellow sisters. We're here to encourage you. Sisters that have probably been through the same situation that you are going and facing, but they'll be able to push you and rear you. And Christ is always there. He's always willing to listen to your prayers. And he leans over and he listens to your cries. So be encouraged, my sister. We love you.
Amen. Having said that, as the Bible says, acknowledge me in all your ways and I will. He will direct your path. That's from someone who had experience that tells us what to do. So on that note, I want to thank my viewing audience for joining us again. I want to thank these two phenomenal moms for being here today. And I'm sure hearts have been encouraged and uplifted. And we're continuing to pray one for another, uh, for the, not just our communities, for our churches, for our world, for our pastors, you know, the job that lays before them and for your children. I'm going to have you guys back again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining you. us. See you next time on The Well After Hours.